How to deal with this? The goal is to prove this limit using the epsilon delta definition. However, I don't know how to deal with the radical. Can you tell me how I can approach this problem? Sure, let's have a look. We will show this limit is indeed equal to 1 over 4 by using the epsilon delta definition. And let's do a quick review. If we have the limit as x approaching some number a of some function f of x, suppose we give a finite limit l, then this right here means we have the following. First, we start off by saying for all epsilon greater than 0, there exists delta greater than 0 such that the following will happen. First, we want the distance between x and a is small enough. This is just how we will say x is approaching a. And to do so, the distance is measured by the absolute value in map. So we just take the absolute value and we do x minus a. And we want this distance to be small enough, meaning you know, less than delta in this case. Yeah, this part is less than delta. And we don't want x to be equal to a. How we can write it is just to make sure this absolute value is always positive so that x cannot equal to a. Once we have this, we shall get, right, this is an implication, we shall get that the distance between the function and the limit is also small enough, which is less than epsilon. So absolute value of the function minus l is less than epsilon. And now, here are the four keywords that will help you to write a nice epsilon delta definition proof. We first start off by writing down proof, and here are the four keywords. Given, choose, suppose, check. This is how it works. When you see for all, you start off by saying, given, epsilon greater than zero. And if your instructor wants you to write given epsilon greater than zero to be arbitrary, then just write that down. If not, it's okay, just like this, it's totally okay. Next, for choose, is for the there exist. You want to choose, you want to specifically write down whatever the delta is going to be. And a lot of people get stuck with this because they don't know what delta is. Let me tell you, I don't know what delta is either at the moment. It's okay. Just leave it for now, move on, and then we'll come back to this once we figure it out. So we're looking at this now. We want to assume this happens. So we will just say suppose Here, the a is equal to 4, so suppose the absolute value of x minus 4 is less than delta, and we don't want x to be equal to 4, so just put down, this is greater than 0 if you look at it backwards. Suppose this happens, then we hopefully to see that this will also happen, and we have to make sure it happens, so we check this inequality. We start off by writing down the absolute value, of the function minus the limit. Here is our function, so square root of x minus 2 over x minus 4, and then minus the limit 1 over 4. So just write down this part first though, and then we have to do some algebra, and then use the condition, and then figure out the delta and all that, and then hopefully you could see that this is less than epsilon the end, and then we'll be done. So now, it's just a matter of doing some algebra. Check this out. In fact, we can simplify this by factoring out x minus 4. If you look at that as square root of x squared minus 2 squared, this is in fact a difference of 2 squares. And then we can factor it. We get square root of x minus 2 times square root of x plus 2. And then you can see that this and that will cancel, which is quite nice. Or you can also multiply the top and bottom by this thing's conjugate, square root of x plus 2, top and bottom. And you also end up with this expression. All right. We have the absolute value. This is just 1 over square root of x plus 2. And then here is minus 1 over 4. And then, of course, we will just combine the fractions and go from there. For the first one, multiply the top and bottom by 4. For the second one, multiply the top and bottom by that square root of x plus 2, square root of x plus 2. So, the denominator, we will just have 4, parentheses, square root of x plus 2. 
this is 4 distribute the minus so we have minus square root of x and then minus 2 now let's go ahead and do two things right here for the top of course we can just work that out we will just get negative square root of x 4 minus 2 right so just plus 2 and then for the bottom we have that part and this is what I'm going to do when we have an absolute value of a quotient this is the same as the quotient of the absolute values meaning that we can just put the absolute value on the top and then divide it by the absolute value of the bottom so right here let me just put the absolute value on the top and then divide it by the bottom part with the absolute value but here's the deal if you look at the inside here we have 4 square root of x plus 2 this right here is never negative so if you put the absolute value here it doesn't matter so just leave it we just have the absolute value of this thing on the top now okay what can we do next there are two ways to go about it remember our goal is to show this less than inequality and thanks to this denominator we can actually show it very nicely here's the deal I'm actually going to take away the denominator I'm just going to look at the top right here absolute value of negative square root of x plus 2 I'm going to ignore the denominator and I'll tell you to look at this compared with that which expression is always bigger the answer is this one is always bigger so we can say this is less than that why oh just write this down because this thing here 4 square root of x plus 2 it's greater than 1 for all x the key right here is not to say this is greater than 0 but rather it's greater than 1 let me give you a quick example let's say we have 6 and 6 of course they are equal right but imagine if I have 6 divided by let's say a number bigger than 1 let's say 2 now which number is bigger of course this right here is bigger same idea this right here has a denominator bigger than 1 so if I take the denominator away and just look at the numerator this thing right here will be bigger and again the key right here is to make sure the denominator is bigger than 1 because imagine if I have something that's actually smaller than 1 you know bigger than 0 let's say 0 0.1 then in this case which one's bigger this is actually going to give us 60 so in fact it will go the other way that's why we have to make sure that this thing here is greater than 1 and why because the square root of x is never negative plus 2 is just greater than it's just plus 2 times 4 right but anyway just mention the greater than 1 for x then we are good to go now this is pretty nice right but there's one thing that we haven't used yet which is this condition when we are used when we are doing proof if we don't use our assumption then something is wrong so what's the connection between this and that though well let me show you let's multiply the top and bottom by these things conjugate now and to do so this is equal to the following absolute value of square root of sorry negative square root of x plus 2 like this multiply the top and bottom by I am going to do the following <laughs> I didn't really like this one because of the negatives and all that but let me factor out the negative first so it becomes negative and then we get square root of x minus 2 yeah and then the absolute value of a product it's the same as the product of the absolute value so I can write this down as absolute value of negative 1 times the absolute value of this thing which is square root of x minus 2 okay this is equivalent to that so that's the equal sign then we are going to multiply the top and bottom by this things conjugate it works it looks nicer this way right anyway just look at the square root of x and then you have plus 2 and then square root of 2 
No, square root. No, no, just plus 2. And then, of course, top and bottom, so square root of x plus 2. Don't cancel the other because we just multiplied it. Now, check this out. This thing is always positive. So you can put the opposite value around it. Doesn't matter. We can multiply the insides of the opposite value. This becomes absolute value of negative 1 doesn't matter. This times this, let me just indicate that. And again, this part is greater than or equal to, it's always it's never negative. But anyway, multiply the inside and put in the absolute value. Square the first term, which is just x, minus square the second term, 2 squared is 4. Yeah, I'll tell you what that out. And then divide it by this thing, square root of x plus 2. Guess what? Can we do this again? Yes. So let's replace. Just take this away and then just say this thing is less than absolute value of x minus 4. Okay? Now as you can see, what's this? This right here, based on our assumption, this is just going to be less than delta. So you can say this right here is less than delta. And remember at the very end, you want to end up with epsilon. Right? So we have this inequality is less than delta already. So what can we say? We can just put delta to be the same as epsilon. Can we say that? Not yet. As long as if you come back here and then put down, choose delta to be the same as epsilon. And whenever you want to make your selection for delta, this part right here should be in terms of epsilon because that's what you are given with. So you can use that. So we can say delta is the same as epsilon. So this is less than delta from here. And then delta is the same as epsilon because we choose it to be so. And then guess what? We are done because we have all this, right? For all epsilon greater than zero, we have found a delta. Once we have this inequality, we also see that the absolute value of the function minus the limit is less than, right, less than, less than epsilon. So we are done. And perhaps this little part right here, I should also mention that because square root of x plus 2 is just like this, is greater than 1 for all x for this inequality. So that's why I just take it, I just took it away. So that's it. And in fact, if you need more help with epsilon delta definitions, especially if you have x is approaching infinity, or maybe the limit being infinity, I have a video, 24 examples with epsilon delta definitions. I will have the link in the description for you. For you. Yep. Hopefully this right here helps though. That's it.